Uh, but we're going to jump into the Word today. We are in this series um, called God, the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, Allison prayed for um, the nation of Israel here at, at the end of our worship. And, and I think when we watch the news, we watch um, things that are going on within culture and society. Like, it's very heavy right now. Like, you just, you just feel the sense of just this weightiness of, of what is going on in, in our country. And then we'll, as we're watching abroad, what's happening in other countries and, and the idea of war and rumors of war. And, and, and honestly, the word tells us that in the last days, these will be the things that will, will begin to come about. But uh, I, was, I didn't have this verse reference and we're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to, I know we've used it uh, a couple times, but I, I wanted to just reference it before I jump into the message today. It's, it's John chapter 14 in verse 16, and, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He, it's his last few hours here on earth, and, and he gives them this promise, and this is what he says. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And I was thinking about that as we were worshiping and, and during this week, and, and I'm thankful that he gives us this gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, that word advocate can be translated a few different ways. It could mean helper. It can mean comforter. It could mean counselor. And what Jesus is saying, he says, I'm going to give you one like me. I have to leave, but there's a reason why I have to leave is because I'm going to give you a gift that will help strengthen you, that will come alongside you. The Greek word used for that is this word parakletos, paraclete. And I know I used this a, a few months back when we were talking about Pentecost. And we look at this Greek word paraclete, and Jesus uses it, honestly, four different times when he's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and the reason why he's leaving him here to sustain those to do the great work that he's commissioned them to do. And we might not necessarily understand what this word paraclete means in the Greek, but that word para means to come alongside. And I think there's some English words that can kind of rejog our memory so that maybe we don't study the Greek, but we know some terms that can help us understand honestly what the Holy Spirit has come to do within our life. So maybe we don't understand what a paraclete is, but how many of you know what a paramedic does? That when you're hurting, when you're ill, when you're in need, the paramedic comes along your side to bring care to your life. We might not understand what a paraclete is, but how many of you know what a parachute does? It guides you to safety. Am I right? And in this world that we're, we're in, there's some guidance that we need within our life. Maybe we don't understand what a paraclete is, but how many know what a paralegal does? They fight on your behalf. Has there been instances in your life where you need someone to fight on your behalf? Well, that's what the helper, the advocate, the counselor, the comforter, that's what he's come to do. And if all of those, you kind of are like, okay, well, I understand that. Well, those of you that have kids that play sports, how many of you know that sometimes they need a paraclete? Am I right? And you know what the cleats help you do? Trust me, I've got tons of them, tons of them. For every sport, you need a cleat. You got a football cleat, a baseball cleat, a golf cleat. You need cleats for everything. And the purpose of the cleat is what? To help you stand your ground. It's what the paraclete does. It's what the Holy Spirit does. He's come to ground us, to give us strength. And it's important that he gives us this strength because in life it's really easy as you're going through things, as you're experiencing difficulties, that it can tear us apart. Like you're facing, facing different challenges and difficulties and as you've experienced life, there's things that come that can tear you to shreds and you're just like, ah, 
And I want us to use this, like, this paper is just this illustration that without the strength of the Spirit, it's real easy to come against and, and get torn apart or be mangled or crumpled or, or, or just kind of beaten and discouraged. But can I remind you what the Holy Spirit does? Same paper, but it's been sealed. It's what the Holy Spirit does. He seals us. Now that same thing, like, like Corey, can you help me for a second? I'm not like doing the fake, oh, I'm trying to tear, but not tearing. Like, Corey, can you tear this? Like, stand up so that everyone can see you. Like, see, like, it, it's a challenge, isn't it, to try to tear because, and to try to crumple it, it doesn't crumble because it folds right back into place. It's because the Holy Spirit, when you receive Christ, he deposits this baptism into your life that seals you, that strengthens you. So when life comes and it ties to tear and ties to shred and tries to crumple, you've been sealed by the love of the Spirit who's given you strength in your life. It's what the Holy Spirit does. Now, I understand we've been in this series and we've said it from, for every weekend. We want you, if you have questions, like if you didn't grow up talking about the Holy Spirit in your church or in the denomination that you came from and now you're hearing a lot about it and you're like, man, I never knew that there was a Holy Spirit or I didn't know what the purpose of the Holy Spirit was or that he gives gifts or that he has things for us and it's confusing to you, we would want you to please come and find us, talk to us. We'll sit down, have a coffee with you, explain to you as how we read the word that God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when we get this notion that maybe the gifts of the spirit or, or the movement of the spirit has ceased, when Allison and I, when we read the Bible and we have to teach it, we have to realize that how could it cease if in John says that I'm giving you a gift that says we'll never leave you if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why would it cease in a period of time? And so we would want for you to come and talk with us so that we can have a healthy dialogue. Because we truly believe that it is important that we understand the role, the purpose, and the power, and the person of who the Holy Spirit is within our life. And so my challenge to us this morning is, why don't we see the regular types of things that we read about in the book of Acts? Because when we look at the Holy Spirit, we look through the book of Acts, and we've been studying, we've been looking at it, and the miraculous that takes place, why don't we see more of that in our day and age? Let me tell you what A.W. Tozer says, and this is what he says. He says, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on and no one would know the difference. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop and everybody would know the difference. Have the gifts ceased? Has the move of the Holy Spirit stopped? Was it for a certain time period? And I would beg to say no, that it has not ceased, that there is still a move of the Holy Spirit, that there is an empowerment that still gives us strength to help sustain us in the life that we have been called to live. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I want us to understand one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is that he empowers you. You know, salvation, when we accept Jesus into our life, salvation is for eternity. That's what we have salvation for. He bri Jesus bridges the gap so that one day we would be in heaven with him and God. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit, what we will talk about, it's for today because it empowers you to live your life, your Christian life here on this earth. And so this word empowerment, what the Holy Spirit has come to do, it says this, the de definition of it is authority or power given to someone to do something. That's what the Spirit has come to do, to give you authority, power, so that you could be able to accomplish the mission that God has placed us on this earth for. 
And as we look through the narrative scripture, we can't help see the pattern that the Holy Spirit is still moving. From Genesis to Revelation, the Spirit of God moves. And if it if it's from Genesis to Revelation, guess what? We are still, he's talking about us because we are in the latter days, that we are in the last days. And it was prophesied in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it brings it back up in Acts chapter two that says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. We are those latter days. We are the ones that he's speaking about, how his spirit will still be poured upon us. Because ultimately, we are waiting for Christ's imminent return to take us back up and to, to, for us to be resurrected in his glory and to spend eternity with him. And so if that is the case, the spirit's for us today. And what I realize that as followers of Jesus, one of the most defining marks of our lives should be the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But here's a question I think that we all need to answer for ourselves is, are we dependent upon the Holy Spirit in our life for anything? Do we depend on the Holy Spirit to lead, to guide, to comfort, to teach? To, do we depend on him in our life for anything? Or do we try to do everything on our own strength? Are we dependent on the Holy Spirit for our gifts, our abilities, our talents, our anointing, our life, our direction, our guidance? Or are we dependent on our job, our savings accounts, our wisdom, our talent, our own skill sets? What are you dependent on? And I can tell you this, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit was absolutely key to everything in Jesus' life and ministry. Think about this. When Jesus was about to start his earthly ministry, he shows up at the Jordan River and John the baptizer is baptizing people. And Jesus himself comes to John saying that he needs to be baptized. And in Luke chapter three, it says that Jesus comes to the point, he goes under the water and what happens? Heavens open up, God's there. Jesus is in the water and there's a dove that descends on him. And the Holy Spirit descends and moves like a dove. And what's the result? This is Jesus is supernaturally empowered by the Spirit. Because look what it says in the next verse in Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We move down just a few more verses in 18 and look what the empowerment of the Holy Spirit looks like in Jesus' life. In verse 18, it says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and to recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And so here's what I want us to see this morning, that Jesus did not step into his earthly ministry until he was empowered by the Spirit. And if Jesus needed the empowerment of this Holy Spirit to accomplish his work on this earth, how in the world do we think that we can go about our days living and trying to fulfill our calling and to fulfill our purpose absent from the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Do you want to know what the secret to Jesus' love and compassion for the people was? It was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Do you know what the secret to Jesus' ability to lead the disciples was? It was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Do we want to know what the secret to Jesus' ability to heal and deliver people? The word says that it was the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But yet oftentimes, we're over here trying to be the man of God that he's called us to be or the woman of God. We're trying to be the best husband or the best wife. I'm trying to be a good pastor. We're trying to do all of that. And oftentimes, we're trying to do it out of our own strength and not with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And because I try to do it in my own strength, how many of you guys have tried to do it in your own strength and have found yourself coming short Every time, coming up short, where it just you, you feel like there's no power. You feel like there's no strength. You feel like, man, I feel just stuck in this rut. It's because we are not operating 
with the power or the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You see, the empowerment doesn't just come off as this one-off prayer. Like you prayed it once and all of a sudden you've been empowered by the Holy Spirit for the rest of your life. What we have to understand is that it's a daily need. It's a daily desire that we need the power. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit today. We need it today. We need it tomorrow. We need it the day after that. And I want to say something that might challenge some of us here today and maybe it will rub you the wrong way, but I think too many people within the church, they're still trying to operate from a grace and anointing from years ago instead of living for today and for the empowerment that the Holy Spirit can give us today in these moments. We're trying to live on yesterday's anointing, but we're supposed to live in today's anointing for what the Holy Spirit has for us. And so when we're wondering why does my life feel like it isn't working or I'm falling prey to familiar sins or my prayers don't feel like they're being answered or I'm not growing in my relationship with God, I'm, I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Maybe it's because you're leaning on a great and anointing from when you first got saved, when you first felt the Holy Spirit. But that time has come because you and I on our best days, you know what we are? Leaky vessels. We leak. Could you imagine if I just, you know, yesterday's water was great that I hydrated with, but it's only going to last me so long. Too many people are dehydrated Christians. We've stopped feasting and feeding on the spirit, which is water for our soul. And we just think, well, we can just get through life with what we had days and years ago. It's a daily infilling that we need of his spirit to help give us strength to accomplish what he's called us to accomplish. You know, in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is telling the Ephesian church, the church of Ephesus, it says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, to give you contents, this is not, this is not like we're talking about salvation. When you receive Christ, when you are saved, when you receive him, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. You are sealed with that Holy Spirit within you. But Paul, what he's talking about is he's talking about a daily filling of his presence. And the reason why we know that is because that word that Paul uses for being filled is infinitive. It's, it's saying be filled and continue to be filled and keep filling. And that's what we need within our life. Because like I said, because you and me at our best, we are leaky vessels and we need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit within our life. And we find that in the fountain of Christ. We need to be filled and overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, if we seek that, if we desire after that, if we pursue that, he will fill us. He will anoint us. He will empower us. But here's the thing. You have to want it. You have to get to this point where you say, Holy Spirit, I, I need your guidance. I need your direction. I need the power so that I can do what I need to do on this earth that you've placed me here for, and I pray that we would become people known for a holy desperation. It says, God, we need more of your anointing. And maybe not more, maybe it's more so fresh anointing. I feel like I'm just going through the motions. I feel like I'm just, I'll come to church, I'll, I'll talk to people, I go back, I, I go to work on Monday, and I, and I feel like I don't have this life that is empowered, that is life-giving. Maybe it's because you need a fresh anointing of God's Spirit within your life today, a new infilling, so that He can give you that strength, that He can show you the way, that He can guide your life. The Bible says that that if we seek God with our whole heart, and Allison referenced it in her prayer in Jeremiah, if that if we seek him, not with, not with our partial heart. He doesn't say if you seek me with some of your heart. He didn't say if you seek me with a little bit of your heart, but he says if you seek me with your whole heart, he goes, you'll find me. Do we have that kind of desire within our life to say, Holy Spirit, I seek you, and I ask you to empower me for this life that you've called me to live? You know, when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, when it comes to the empowerment of the Spirit, it's the same principle that is true as Jeremiah is talking about seeking God. And when Paul writes about these gifts in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 14, and we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit next week, 
he references the starting place in order to receive these gifts is desire. Romans 12, 31 says, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Now, this is something that we definitely see and display in the New Testament church, in the book of Acts. But we know that everything that they did, they did it through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the book of the Bible in Acts, this book of the Bible is dedicated to the new church, is called the book of Acts. Because they are the acts of the apostle. They're the acts of the believers that they moved, they acted upon what the Holy Spirit was doing in their life. They were just given the great commission to go out into all the world, preach the gospel. This is what Jesus left them with. But he says, before you do that, before you leave to do what I've called you to do in this commission, that we're going to come together, I'm going to give you a gift to help you. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, he says, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but just in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. In verse 8 it says, here's why, you got, here's why you have the Spirit. He says, but you will receive power. That's this word dunamis where we get our word dynamite. He says, you will receive that type of power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He says, before you go... I'm going to give you this gift, and it's going to give you power. He gave us that same gift, that empowerment of the Holy Spirit, so that we can do the Great Commission, because we are all disciples, followers of Christ, and so we need to learn how to operate in that gift and saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to yield to you so that you can lead, you can guide, you can comfort, you can strengthen, you can give wisdom. We can ask him for those things to give us the power for this day. But we will never accomplish what God has called us to accomplish until we are empowered by his spirit. Again, if you look at the book of Acts, you see some of these supernatural events that took place. You look at healing, guidance, wisdom, prophecy, angelic intervention. You see power over the demonic. You see miracles for provision, boldness accompanying, witnessing and preaching. You see generosity unleashed. You see the joy and the favor and the unity, and all of that takes place in the book of Acts due to the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And when we go back to that, that quote that A.W. Tozer says that if we were to take the Holy Spirit out of the church, 95% of what we do would continue on. But if you were to take the Holy Spirit out of the New Testament church, 95% of everything that took place would have ceased. It's time for us as the Church of America, if we want to see... The, the events and the things that took place in the book of Acts, we need to seek God's presence more. In our daily lives, in our churches, we need to be submitted to the person of the Holy Spirit and know that he's still at work in this day and age. Barna did that research where it says that 62% of Christians, believers, believe that there isn't a Holy Spirit. But there is a Holy Spirit that is still on the move but we have to desire, we have to long for his presence to be active within our life. You know, we may see some of these acts occasionally, but I believe that God wants to do something more, more within us, more within this church. And so we have to ask ourselves, where is the disconnect? Why aren't we seeing these things? And I think if we look at our daily life, our schedules, the things that keep us busy, I think there's a lot of disconnect on why there isn't more of a move of the Holy Spirit. But I want to just help us understand that if we were to look at the book of Acts, what were some of the things that they did that created this desire and this empowerment of what the Holy Spirit had come to do? And the first thing is that we read when you look at Acts chapter 2 and it talks about the birth of this church as the disciples gather together. The first one is is that they were people of the word. People were like, well, I want more of the Holy Spirit. Well, we need to get in his word. We need to long for his word. We have to have this desire where we're reading his word. It says that they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. Well, what were the apostles' teachings? They were the word of God. They found themselves meeting in homes and, and marketplaces and in the synagogue. And it was all around the word of God. They desired to know more of who he was. 
And that's what's got to take place within our own life. That we got to realize that we've got to get into his word. That we've got to understand who he is. And when we get into his word, we understand who the Holy Spirit was. Because it says that scripture was God breathed from Genesis to Revelation. So if we want to know more of who he is, we've got to get into the word. Psalms tells us that he is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. The Holy Spirit will bring scripture back into memory. Have you been there? Have you been in a place where you were thinking about something, you were going through something, and there was a quickening of the Holy Spirit where you remembered a verse that says, oh yes, I am an overcomer, I'm found in Christ. I can do all things. And then there was that comfort and that peace that not only came over upon your heart, but your mind. It's because it was the quickening of the Holy Spirit to remind you of his word. But the Holy Spirit can't quicken and remind you of those things if we don't know the word. That's why we've got to read these things. And, and the Holy Spirit will help you gain revelation in his word. That's why we need him. He helped write the book. So we need him to speak to us, to guide us, to help us to understand. If you're having trouble as you're reading the word and you're like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I would ask you to do this next time you open up your Bible. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal your word to me. Reveal your word to me, your spoken truth. And I believe that you would begin to see it in a greater light, a better anointing of what he's trying to do in and through your life through his word. Because he's given it to us to equip us, to guide us, to strengthen us. We need to desire to be people of the word just as that book of Acts church was. And I know our lives move so fast that we get easily distracted when it comes to our love and our desire for God's word. But it's important that we make time. Whether you're, you get up an extra few minutes early and you, and you read his word before you start your day, get to work. Maybe you, you, you put the Bible app. The Bible app is great. And you can actually play. You can listen to the word being read to you. And that's one of the great ways to hear God's word. But not only do we need to read it and listen to it, but we need to speak it. We need to, there's power. We understand there's power in his word. That's the only offensive weapon that he gives us when we look at the book of Ephesians. You know, it's the spirit, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's a double-edged sword. So, yeah, we can put our hands together for that if you want. If you think about when... And the reason why I think it's double-edged is because when you read it, it does one thing. But when you speak it and declare it, it does another. When you think about it, when the sword goes in, it cuts. When it pulls out, it cuts. It's because you're reading it and you're speaking it. You're understanding it and you're declaring it over your life. You're speaking to your situations. You're speaking to your future. You're speaking to the promises of God that says that I am more than a conqueror. That through Christ Jesus, I can do all things through Christ. And you're realizing that it's the word of God through his spirit that is guiding you and strengthens you. We've got to be people of the word. When we speak the word, when we listen to the word, we understand that our faith grows. Romans tells us, that, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we've got to continue, continue to declare God's word upon our life because it's by faith that we receive these things. Some of the greatest things in our salvation, you would, by faith we receive salvation. By faith we inherit the promises of God. By faith we draw near to God. By faith the promises of God become a reality in our life. It's by faith that he bridges the gap between humanity. So when we look at the word, when we speak the word, our faith begins to grow. And there is an empowerment to that. The second thing that we see in the book of Acts is that not only were they people given to the word, but they were people given to prayer. We've got to long to have this communication with God through prayer. It says all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship and the sharing of meals and to prayer. And when the disciples did that, when they leaned into the word, when they leaned into prayer, we see what God did, the great miracles 
of the church were birthed in the releasing of leaning into that word, community, and prayer. But here's the point. Prayer wasn't just this add-on to their life. Prayer was a part of who they were. It's who they were. They were people of prayer. It wasn't like I do everything in life and then I pray. It's like we pray and then everything around revolves around our life. I know we're busy. I know we can easily get distracted. But if we want to see the move of the Holy Spirit like never before, we've got to block those things out and we've got to make prayer a priority. That we've got to make the word a priority within our life. That we would lean into these things so that we can receive the empowerment of what the Holy Spirit is trying to do within our life. And church, I just can't help but wonder, are we doing some of these things wrong? In the sense, we just show up, we get a word and we just leave. And we aren't seeking him. We aren't seeking his spirit more. We aren't seeking the word more. We aren't seeking him in prayer more. And I just wonder what would happen if we gave, if we, if we just stepped aside from what we've, the busyness of the things that life thinks is telling us that we need to do so that we can rely on our own strength and that we would lean on the strength of the Holy Spirit. What would our life look like? What would this church look like? What would our community look like? You just need a fresh wind. This relationship with Jesus is not supposed to be stale and stagnant. It's got to be something stirring within us. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to just have my ears tickled. Well, that's a good word. Thanks, Pastor. Go on about my week. There's got to be hunger inside of us that says that we're searching for something that's life giving. If we come into this place and we leave just the same, still struggling, still seeing the world out of a, a different perspective, still just like, ah, like if we just feel just this tension within our body and our spirit, we're not doing this thing right. The Holy Spirit's come to empower you to live a life differently. And I think many of us in this place, we've had that experience where you just... You felt the power. You felt just an anointing. You felt a strength. But maybe you don't feel it right now. And it's not that you've lost the Holy Spirit. If you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, you haven't lost that. But you've just lost the freshness of what the empowerment is supposed to do in your life. King David wrote in Psalms, He says, God, in his deepest need, he said, God, anoint me with fresh oil. I think we need to be a church that has been anointed with his fresh oil. There's some things that maybe we need to do differently within our life to make sure that the word and prayer are more appropriate more of a priority so that we could say, you know what, Lord, you've called me, you've equipped me to do your good work. And I'm going to surrender my will, my way, my pleasures for your will, your way, your pleasures so that we can make a difference. We can make a difference in this world. The book of Acts They were set on fire.
reason why we can be even be sitting in this place today is because they leaned in. Fast forward over 2,000 years later, what would happen if we leaned in just like they did to the word, to prayer, and to that empowerment of what the Holy Spirit can do in your life? I'm going to have a stand to our feet today. And we want to close this out in prayer. Holy Spirit, we make room for you in this place. Maybe there's some of you in here today and you're like, Aryan, I love God. I'm thankful for my relationship with Jesus. Man, life just seems just challenging right now. I feel like there's no power. There's no strength. I feel like I'm just barely getting by. Maybe you're in here today and that's you. And you just need a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit in your life today. Where he'll fill, fill you to bring strength, to bring peace, to bring comfort, to bring joy. If you're in this place today and you feel comfortable enough just to maybe just open up your hands in this place. God, I just pray for a fresh anointing in this place. God, a fresh wind. God, let us not be content of maybe the infilling that we had months, years ago. But give us a new anointing, God. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would lead us. You would strengthen us. We pray for a fresh anointing. God, we pray that you would pour your spirit out in this place. God, we thank you. We thank you. God, we pray that we would lean into, as the book of Acts did, Lord, we pray that we would lean into our word, that we would find ways, Lord Father God, to make that a priority within our life, that we would make prayer a priority within our life. God, and that daily we would ask for this filling, as you told, as Paul told the Ephesians, that daily we would be filled with your Holy Spirit. I pray that we would be reminded that we can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he is a person and as Jesus says that I'm leaving, but I'm leaving you one of the same, one like me that will be with you forever. God, I pray that we would understand that that Holy Spirit empowers us to live this Christian life out. I'm gonna pray here just in this moment where I'm gonna have our prayer team come forward and we're gonna pray for you. You know, the pattern in the Bible that you saw where people were filled with the Spirit was just laying on of hands. It's not the only way, but it was, it was a primary pattern. Maybe you just feel like, you know what, I just need a fresh touch. And we're just going to pray with you this morning. If that's you and you just say, all right, I just need a fresh touch. We're just going to pray and just lay hands on you. That comes at a point where, you know, the Bible says that we need to get rid of unbelief, unforgiveness, and an unrepentant heart. And the Holy Spirit can make room within our life. And so we just want to pray with you. And this is how we'll end service. I'm going to pray one more time, and then we're just going to have you, if you just like a new, fresh wave of God's Holy Spirit presence within your life to empower you. We want to pray for that to happen this morning. So I'm going to pray. Then you can come forward, or you can be dismissed at that time. But we're just going to believe for God just to ignite the fire and give us strength. So God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this church, God. Let us 
realize, God, that we haven't come just to play church, God, but we're called to be the church, to be your hands and feet. But in order to do that, God, we need the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. So we thank you, God, for what you're going to do. We thank you for a freshness. We thank you, God, that you will continue. As we ask, you will give. And we pray that you bless everyone as they go about their week. I pray that they would live a life that is spirit-filled, spirit-led, and trusting you. And we thank you, God, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.